Corneria, fourth planet of the Lilat system. The evil Andros turned this once thriving system into a wasteland of near extinction. General Pepper of the Cornerian army was successful in exiling this maniacal scientist to the barren, deserted planet Venom. Five years later, General Pepper noticed strange activity coming from Venom. James McLeod, Pigma Dangar, and Peppy Hare of the Star Fox team were sent to investigate. Upon their arrival, Pigma betrayed the team, and James and Peppy were captured by Andros. Peppy barely escaped Venom and returned home to tell James' son, Fox, about his father's fate. A few years have passed. Andros has again invaded the Lilat system. General Pepper has turned to a new Star Fox team headed by Fox McCloud to save Corneria and free the Lilat system once again. Message from General Pepper, Priority One. We need your help, Star Fox. Andros has declared war. He's invaded the Lilat system and is trying to take over Corneria. Our army alone can't do the job. Hurry, Star Fox. And hello everyone, welcome to Let's Play Star Fox 64. Let's actually get underway with the first episode. So this is the opening cutscene where we're introduced to our main cast of characters. The four, the team of four known as Star Fox. Fox McCloud, Falcon Lombardi, Peppy Hare, and Slippy Toad. So yeah, this is, this uh, little uh, cutscene of them all running to their ships has become sort of like a classic image of this series. And I actually find it kind of interesting that they actually give, you know, the R-Wing, you know, the actual ships that they fly, its own little, like, nameplate at the bottom of the screen. But yeah, we're gonna get started on this, uh, all-metal run. And, uh, today we're gonna be covering, uh, two planets. So here we're introduced to the Lilac system, which is, of course, a solar system that the World of Star Fox takes place in. Uh, using the control stick, you can rotate, um... It in any direction that you want. You have pretty much complete 360 degree like rotational view around it any way that you please and using the Z and R buttons you can zoom in and zoom out. Not much of much point but it's fun to do. It's about time you showed up Fox. You're the only hope for our world. I'll do my best. Andros won't have his way with me. Good luck. I never knew that that voice clip used to say good luck when I was a kid. It never- it just sounds too garbled. Garbled rock? I don't know. It sounds more clear in the Super Nintendo game, oddly enough. Open the wing! Check your G-Diffuser system. Falco here. I'm fine. This is Peppy. All systems go. Flipping here. I'm okay. I see him up ahead. Let's rock and roll! So this is the first stage. Every time you start a game of Star Fox 64, you will always begin at Corneria. And there's a, a few very simple enemies to start out with, and you can, uh, see what I did there. I didn't lock onto the enemies, but I still defeated them with the, uh, blast, and that gave me an extra hit. And, yep, uh, Slippy is known for, uh, kinda, you know, like, getting enemies on his tail really quickly. Don't let the voice trick you, it's a he. Uh, in these games, if you want the medals, you have to have all three of your wingmates, like, survive the survive the mission with a life bar still at least intact if they drain enough they have to retire to the uh, great fox like the great uh, 
their great like flying base. And uh, you can't get a medal if uh, any of the three wingmates have uh, had their health drained by the enemies, or you, since there is friendly fire in this game. So yeah, you can actually shoot and like it, uh, take your own wingmates out of action. Now in Corneria, you have to get 150 kills in order to get the medal, which is actually really tricky. Uh, as you as you saw a little bit before, if you go between like some of the uh, like spaces in between some of the uh, broken. Uh, buildings who actually can summon items and uh, more enemies. So like flying down there through that bridge spawn those like little like uh, moth enemies to appear behind that giant carrier. The carriers themselves are worth like uh, five or six hits. Oh uh, yeah, six hits as well. So um, in this mission it's actually quite tricky in order to get all that you need. So flying through archways can get you things like uh, rings and bombs and laser upgrades. So uh, don't be afraid to to do that in order to actually get the and extra enemies appear in order to help you get the the uh, 150 hits that it takes in order to um get the uh so falco was being chased right there saying he had problems with this g diffuser i thought he checked it and if uh you don't uh, take out the three enemies behind him really quickly he will get knocked out of commission and you could lose out on the metal and also lose out on a potential uh, alternate pathway for this i'm actually not going to show the alternate pathway for conaria for until a later video because uh we got a lot of things we have to cover. Uh, it, it's it's something that's better shown off when I actually start the uh, other missions. In this first uh, archway, if you do a somersault right there, you can end up picking up an extra bomb if you like. Those skiers are good to destroy because they give you four hits each if you destroy them. And right here, uh, Peppy's going to be uh, chased by some enemies. He'll actually uh, get his health down pretty quickly. So yeah, you'll want to save him or else uh, Peppy will end up uh, getting knocked out too. And yeah, I was super lucky right at this point because I got 139 hits, which is the bare minimum that you need until you reach the boss in order to actually get 150. All range mode. Now starting off here, I tried to do this little trick where I do a somersault like through the enemy's legs. This enemy is called Granga, just, just, as, just so happens I actually shot a bomb there. If you accidentally screw up the somersault by hitting them, you actually fail to get the little secret that I'm trying to show you. But this boss is incredibly simple. What you need to do is shoot out one of his shoot out one of his legs, and he will just fall to the ground and be unable to move. Then all you have to do is just shoot his green energy backpack, and he's dead. He actually has a lot of funny lines like "you annoying little flies" when you shoot him, but I didn't really show that off there. If you defeat a boss enemy quickly, you generally get uh, 11 hits for getting it. That's why I was able to get 150 points for this. Ironically enough, for the first mission of the entire game, I actually think it's one of the trickiest to get the medal on. We're heading out. All aircraft report. You did it! I was worried for a moment. You're becoming more like your father. I'm fine. You okay over there, Fox? And yeah, at the end of the mission, depending on how well you did, and your uh, your teammates will recover some health. And for every 100 hits in your accumulated total, you'll get an extra one up. So let's see what happens when I actually get the uh, somersault trick to actually work properly. So you have to get around, say, right around that level of hype beneath his legs, and you actually get a one up to appear. But sometimes, as I'm going to show off here, he just will not stay still, and he'll just walk into you and ruin your chances. Yes. Yeah, I really hated that he did that. If you don't somersault beneath his legs immediately when the fight starts, you lose out your chance in order to get it anyways. So there, I just showed how to get the medal. I already have the medals on normal mode on this, so you're going to see medals in front of all the planets here. But I'm still going to show you how to get all of them. Impressive, Star Fox. Now watch out for enemies in the asteroid field. I won't let you down, sir. Good luck. Yeah, if you take too long to defeat the stage boss, the uh, amount of points that it gives you when you defeat him starts to gradually drop. I forget if you can actually wait so long to fight him that the score drops down to one hit when you defeat him, or if it's just two. But yeah, you could get... I know you could at least get it down to two, only two hits whenever you beat him, so... Things are starting to heat up! Quit thinking around, Flip! We're heading into the asteroid. So here are this. So uh, when it, every time you start another mission, you keep the amount of bombs and uh, how and your laser upgrades. 
and uh, how many uh, gold rings you had accumulated from the last one, but not the life bar. So you have, so generally it's good to end a stage with like two gold rings if you have a, uh, if you have you know like um an extended life bar already, so that you can start the next one the first gold ring and get can uh, expend your life bar. Flying through all those little like a uh, like uh, asteroid rings I showed you through will unlock a uh, laser upgrade to show up. And people will say it's quiet too quiet, and these uh these little moths are gonna come out here and shoot at you. Uh, they're not too bad, just... Yeah, a bomb is actually a pretty good thing in order to take them all out, because a lot of them keep coming out trying to hit you. Right here, you can have, like, these two, like, a weird, like... Like, flying serpent things come at you, and plus this little mech down there, so... But they're pretty easy to take out as long as you have the hyper lasers. Which are the blue lasers, and they are the most powerful laser upgrade, like, you know, that you can deal with. Here, uh, do a somersault right when you touch the... Touch the bomb, and you'll be able to get that entire list, that entire ring of stuff. And going through that little, like, ring of four asteroids will unlock another laser upgrade if you find them. So that's a big thing about this game, flying through these, like, little seemingly innocuous, like, archways and rings. And those will make, like, upgrades or, like, bombs and item refills appear. And I just keep pressing the boost button in order to get myself uh, through these asteroids so I don't have to avoid it, any of it. These four enemies here are actually, well, four things are actually enemies, so. And every time the, uh, message at the top of the screen, you see the right C button appear, and it's like a call. Press it as quick as you can, because Rob will send a, uh, supply to you. Like, it's generally the best whatever you need. He'll give you a laser upgrade, he'll give you a bomb sometimes. If your wings are, if one of your wings is broken off because you took too many collisions, uh, he'll send you a, a wing repair. Uh, and if your health is really low, he'll send you a, a star ring, which um, will restore a lot of health. So yeah, Peppy's gonna get chased right at that point by four enemies, so have a charge shot ready, and uh, you should be able to take care of them pretty quickly. Uh, the max number of uh, smart bombs you can hold is nine. And uh, use knowing when to use your bombs is um, essential if you want to, generally essential if you want to get um, all the medals in the game. Right here, these are kind of weird. Those these little white lines of these enemies that drop will hit you, will hurt you if you run into the white lines. So got to be careful of that. Take uh, right down in the see if you could shoot a bomb far away straight into the middle of this tunnel, and you could take out all those turrets that are on there. I shot that bomb too late to try and take out those other ships to uh, that were uh, throwing out white lines. There's those little asteroids that have turrets on them. Uh, when you hear like this like little weird whirring sound. That's the sound that this, uh, bee enemy or something is coming down to fight you. And they send out these pretty highly damaging, uh, rings of, like, uh, orbs behind you. you want a piece of Actually, Slippy won't really get hit by those enemies that's chasing him. It's kind of weird. But for those bee enemies, if, um, just fly through the middle of their, like, a ring shots and you can, uh, shoot straight at them. So they're not too difficult. They often drop, uh, gold rings and stuff and they're worth a decent amount of hits, too. That ring will- that, uh, asteroid will only be destroyed if Falco has survived into here. So, coming up right here, you see these, uh, blue, like, circles. You're gonna want to fight through all- all eight of them in order to access the alternate pathway here. Press Z and R in order to bank left and right in order to reach them easier. I actually didn't know you could do that until rather recently, so I was always, like, trying my hardest to time it properly ever- ever since I was a kid. But doing so makes you jump in- makes you, uh, make the jump into hyperspace, as it were, and you end up in this weird dream-like area, and the reason why I want to show you here is, one, it's the alternate path to go to one of the planet ways, and the second is, it's because this is the best way in order to get the metal. There are so many easy targets here that can just really bolster your score, so if you've been, uh, shooting pretty well up until this point, you're probably gonna make it. And right here, look at this, if you, uh, uh somersault properly, you can get yourself a nice amount of bombs. All of these, like, multicolored Tron line asteroids are all considered an enemy, so if you, like, blow up any of them, you get a hit onto your counter, which is really nice. Which is why this section is so easy to help you get a medal on. Uh, if one of your, uh, wingmates, um, has to retire in the middle of a mission, they will not be there in the following mission. So you won't get any of their dialogue, they won't be able to help you, like, with any items or anything, should that happen. But they'll be there for the mission after that. So if they get knocked out, they can't participate in the next mission, but then they'll return for the mission after that with a full life bar. So that's how that works. 
So you're just gonna want to make sure that you don't, you know, really... You want to save all your wingmen if you're looking for the, uh, for the, uh, medals. So, okay, they're already reached 200, which is the amount that you need here. And in this, uh, last stretch of, uh, asteroids, you just keep shooting. You find so many laser upgrades and bombs, it's ridiculous. Who needs that many laser upgrades? You only need two in order to get the best laser upgrade. And you see how it says here, mission accomplished, instead of mission complete? That's a sign that you generally did the, uh, tougher of the, uh, two parts of that mission, and that you'll be going to the upper route, which are considered the harder paths. Well, the, the planets themselves normally aren't really that much harder, that's just what they call them. And with that, that's how you get the medal for Meteo. And doing, taking that work will take you to Planet Katina, but I'm not going to go there. And since I was able to access the alternate path, when I press A to select Katina, I'm able to change the course to the normal one. But I also decided to reach to redo to redo Meteo to show you the normal pathway without using the warp. So we're going to cut to this part where Falco destroys that one asteroid to get you a gold ray. Sorry, gold ring. Uh, if you've been pretty dedicated shooting, you could actually take out these uh, rings of uh, enemies right here and uh, for about like say about eight hits each. Eight hits per cluster, so you can probably still get the get the 200 hits necessary if you're pretty dedicated and you know how to take out those uh, clusters of moth enemies. See, like that, they're worth about they're worth about eight. And uh, here in this final stretch, right afterwards, uh, if you shoot all the uh, brown asteroids, they all count as hits. Those uh, rocks with asteroids that turn into turrets, I think they can be destroyed with a uh, bomb, just not with lasers, but I wasn't going for the metal this time around because I already showed you how to get the metal. And right here, we'll come to the boss of Meteo. Well, the normal boss of Meteo. I cannot allow you to go any further. Let's see what you've got. Now against this guy, um, he's gonna have this little shield in front of him. There's gonna he's gonna exp expose these uh, yellow triangles, yellow weak points to shoot him. In this first phase, he has a little shield in front that'll uh, absorb your laser fire and reflect it, shoot it back at you if you're standing right in front of it. It's pretty simple because it's just like uh, four triangles to shoot out, and he shoots out these little like uh, flying enemies that to come after your enemy after your wingmates. You have to be careful because, uh, yeah, that shield will fly out and will damage you if you let it. And with this one, uh, the weak spot is going to be right there in the center, right behind where this giant laser is going to be shooting out of, so... Yeah, that could be a tough one to hit without... Tough one to shoot at without getting hit yourself. Uh, something I want to point out, the little fighters are things like... I'm no match for you. I admit defeat. Are you gonna listen to that monkey? <laughs> You're not as stupid as you look! Basically, just avoid the purple rings that he shoots at you, it's not that bad. But yeah, for every time during a boss fight, even though they'll spawn little fighters to go after you, uh, killing them will not add to your score. I can't believe I lost to this scum! Sorry to Jet, but I'm in a hurry. So yeah, if you're in the middle of a boss fight, you think you could uh, bolster your score to get the medal by shooting out all the little enemies that they spawn to go and attack you? Uh, think again, because none of them contribute to the score. I'm fine, I'm fine! I've taken a few hits, but I'm okay! You worry about your own high. Sometimes your teammates will say different things depending on their uh, health status at the end of the mission. Slippy might say, I'm having a bit of trouble here or something if uh, his health is getting pretty low. But in any case, those are the first two planets of Star Fox 64. Tune in next time when we take on the third planet, Fortuna. Or is it supposed to be Ficina? I think it was like a translation error for the uh, North American version. But in any case, uh, we'll get there in the next episode. I hope you enjoy this video, and I'll see you in the next time.